By this time, most of us are familiar with cutting and pasting in Excel. There are times, however, when it seems like the paste part of that just doesn't work out how we'd like it to. Maybe we copied a formula on one worksheet to another and the result was just crazy. Or maybe you had a very neatly formatted table and when you tried to paste in a new value, it completely overwrote the formatting. Well, Paste Special is a more granular approach to pasting. It'll let us paste what we want and only what we want to the new destination. For example, we can paste only the value of a cell so that the formatting stays intact, or you can paste only the formatting of the cell. As you'll see in this lesson, we have a lot of control over what we can do in cutting and pasting. Let's start off by just reviewing cut, copy, and paste a, a little bit. Cut is used to reposition items that may be out of place. So in our example, we've got row 16 here looks like it's separated from the table. We might want to cut that and move it back into the table. Copy will make a copy to use somewhere else. Copy is used quite a bit when building formulas and tables. Once your formula is completed and validated, you can simply copy it to other rows and have the same formula replicated throughout a table. And then paste will put the things where you want them to go. So let's review that again. We're going to select row 16 because we want to move it back with our table. And we'll do a cut, but this time we're going to use keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcut for cut, copy, and paste is Command X, Command C, and Command V. And one reason I like those keyboard shortcuts, they're all right next together on the keyboard. So it's really easy to remember. X is like a cut, C is copy, of course, and V could look like indenting for a copy, but I just think it's because they're right next to each other. So they make sense. So we'll do a command X to cut and then click on cell A14 and do a command V. You see Excel cut it out of where it was on 16 and put it up on row 14. Well now we're going to do a couple copies. We're going to copy what's in E10 down to E12. And this time when we select on cell E10 instead of using command C to copy we're going to also use Control C. That's the same as using Command C. And then we'll click down in E12 and do Control V or Paste. Now, one of the reasons for that, I think, is because Windows users, the Control key is typically the key they use for their keyboard shortcuts. So I think that's why there's a redundancy. The command is used for the Mac users. Control is something PC users are used to. Well, now let's go and copy our formula. Let's go up and select our formula on cell F10. And look at it. It's an average of B10 through E10. We want that same formula to be applied to every row, the 11th row, 12, 13, and 14. So we're going to click on F10. We're going to do Command C to copy. Then we're going to highlight F11 through F14 and paste with a Command V. A couple things to notice. The first one is the formula did indeed copy to every cell in that range. And let's look at it. We've got an average of each row, and they're different. One of the things to notice is that Excel didn't copy exactly what was in the 10th row. Remember, the 10th row, the formula was average of B10 through E10. Well, in the 11th row, it's the average of B11 through E11. So Excel copied basically the formula, but it changed the cell references within the formula to make it be relevant to where you copy it. This is what's known as relative referencing and is one of the things that really, really makes Excel a useful tool. Now the other thing I want to point out is when we did a paste of that formula, notice how since we copied F10 and we pasted the whole formula, it overwrote the formatting in row 11 and row 13. And that's what we're going to get into in a little bit. We want to see how to paste that formula but leave the formatting alone so that every other row is shaded. Now let's move on to our paste special values command. In many cases, you're going to use a formula to calculate a value, but then want to use that value on a report. Or sometimes if you paste a formula, it won't work because it'll paste it relatively and the components of the formula are not where you want them to be on the worksheet you pasted the formula. Or you might simply just not want the formula on your final report and just opt instead for the static value. In any case, this is where we want to just paste the value of the formula only. Well, we're going to start off by seeing what happens when you don't do that. Let's click on cell C25. That's the total sales. 
And what we're going to do is put that in C29. So let's do our keyboard shortcut, Command C. And we'll go down to C29 and just Command V. We'll just paste. Now a couple of things happen here. The first one is we completely lost our formatting because we did a paste. The second one is because we did a paste and it pasted a formula, the formula is now looking to multiply C27 times C28. Well there's nothing in those cells and that's why we get a zero for total sales. In our original cell it was C23 times C24 so that made sense. So let's go ahead now and see how to just paste the values. We'll go up to our toolbar and do the undo. And now we're going to go back to C25 and do our command C again. This time we're going to just click on C29 and on the home tab in the edit group in the upper left we have a paste button and next to it's a drop down arrow. We can click that and now we get the choice to paste formulas, values, without borders, transpose, link, and a couple of other things. Right now we just want to do values. So there we go. We maintained the formatting of our cell C29. We pasted the actual value. So we were able to get what we wanted by doing a paste special and values. So now let's talk about pasting formats. Let's look at our worksheet and you see the next section heading is on A37. It's paste formats, but it's not formatted correctly. So I can come back to A22, click on it and do my control C for copy. Then I can go down to A37 and I'll click my drop down next to the paste command and I don't see something that just says formats but I do see paste special. If I click that it'll bring up the paste special dialog box and this is where every possible option for pasting is. We've got formulas, values, formats, comments, validation, a couple of other more advanced features to the right. We're going to go over some, of the, some more of these in the next couple sections. But right now, all we want to do is paste the format from A22. So I'll click OK. And it pasted the exact format I had from the previous section heading. Along with the uh, Paste Special Formats, we also have a tool called the Format Painter, which is really, really neat. What that does is that allows you to select the format up front and then just highlight what cells you want to apply that format to. I'm going to take the format in B38 and I'm going to apply it to B40 to C42. So I'll click on B38 and then up in our toolbars the format painter is this paintbrush and it just has a little paintbrush with some paint on it. I'll click on it and then I can select B40 to C42 and it painted the formatting to all the cells I just selected. But pasting comments and validation rules. The comments are notes you can attach to a cell that will appear when your mouse is hovering above the cell. If we look down in our paste comment section you see I've got a drop down that, tell, that tells me what I entered into that comment and I put another comment in for price. Enter the price in dollars of one of the products. Okay. So that's simple enough. They can be instructive or general information about the contents of the cell, whatever you want them to be. In our case, in D54 and E54, they're simple descriptions of what should be entered into the cell. Now, validation is the feature that allows you to attach drop-down lists to a cell or to limit what can be entered without writing any VBA code, that is. Now, there's a validation rule applied to D54 that limits the values to a value between 0 and 5,000. So if I click in there in the quantity, you see how it says quantity between 0 and 5,000. So I can't put in a negative number. It won't let me do that. And I also can't put in a number greater than 5,000. It won't let me do that either. So that's what a validation rule is. We'll cover setting those up in a later section. Start off by copying our comments down a few rows. So let's go ahead and select D54 to E54. And we'll do our copy, Command C. And now let's highlight all the cells we want that to go to. So we'll highlight D55, we'll go down about three rows to E57. And now I want to go to my Paste Special dialog box. This time I'm going to go to the Edit menu and just click on Paste Special. And here we want to choose one of the components to paste. It's going to be Comments and click OK. And now you see my comments got copied down to every other cell. 
Next thing we want to do is copy the validation rules because right now they're not applied here. I can type in 8,000 into the quantity and it works and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is highlight B54 to F54 and do my copy, Command C. And now I'm going to highlight where I want to paste all the validation rules. So that will be B55 to F57. And this time for a keyboard shortcut, I'm going to do Control Command V to pull up my Paste Special dialog box. And now I'm going to paste validations and click OK. Well now all my validations, that's mostly the drop downs, got carried down to the rest of my table. If I click in the product now, I get my drop down list of products soccer ball, football, basketball, or baseball. What quarter it is, I can type in, I can type in second quarter for quantity and price. And then the total. I need to build a total formula. Okay. Just talk about some of the other options in this top section of the paste special. You see we've got a lot of different variations on different things to paste. We've got all using the source theme, all except borders. So if you want to paste some formatting formulas and, and colors, you could paste all that without the borders. You can paste column widths, you can paste formulas and the number formats with them. That's useful if you've got currencies and percentages and different decimal places in your table. Values and number formats or merge conditional formatting. And that's if you've got conditional formatting on the cells that you're pasting to as well as the ones you're copying from. This can merge those two together. The next section we're going to talk about is the operational paste special. This type of paste special will actually perform an action as you paste. So in other words, it will add or subtract a value as you paste it onto another. To be honest, I think the benefits of this are maybe dubious at best. It could be used to add a large range to another large range, but there's probably a better way to do it. Just to illustrate though, we'll do a quick demonstration of the operational paste. And now let's select B67 through B70. And we'll do our copy and we'll just do a paste special add. Click OK. And you see that was kind of the same thing because those cells were blanks. But while we're still doing cut and paste I can right click again and do paste special add. And you see what happens is it adds all the values that are still highlighted to get pasted one, two, three, and four to our target range. Let's do it again. Paste special, add. Now let's try the paste special subtract. So I'll right click, go to paste special, and I'll do a subtract and click OK. And you see how it subtracted one, two, three, and four from there. How about a paste special multiply? Now if multiply works the same way the others work, this first value should still be two. One times two is two. Then 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 6 is 18, so let's do the pay special multiply and click OK. And you see it multiplied what's in our copy range to our destination paste range. So that's how the operational paste special works. And we'll kind of let you decide if this is a feature you want to add to your daily bag of tricks or not. The next feature we're going to explore in the paste special dialog box is the skip blanks feature. This one's really a bit quirky. Skip blanks does not really do what you might expect it to. If you're copying a range of cells to a location where there's data already, skip blanks will not overwrite any cell if there was a blank where you copied from. Confused yet? Good, because I kind of am too. The best way really to explain this is just to show you how it works. So we'll select B83 through B90 and we'll do our copy. Now we'll just do a regular copy over our target range A, or a regular paste I mean. And you see how this 
paste copied everything in that source region over to column D. Now let's select F83 to F90 and we'll do a paste special to the skip blanks there and click OK. Now you see how the values 5 and 6 are still in that target range? They're left alone and the reason is in the place we copied it from there was a blank in the fifth and sixth row of our copy source. So what it did is Excel skipped pasting those two rows into its target destination and left what was already in there, the five and the six. Is this an interesting feature of Excel? It's very interesting. Is it really going to be useful in day-to-day -day operations? Again, we're going to have to leave that up to you. The last feature we're going to look at in the Pay Special dialog box is the Transpose option. And this is a very useful tool in Excel. It allows you to change the orientation of, from, of data in your worksheets from vertical to horizontal or vice versa. This is really useful when you've copied a list of headings from one source and need to orient them differently. Let's go down to our Transpose section and we'll select B103 down to M103. And we have the months staggered so you can actually see how Excel will transpose the entire range if there's more than one row that you're transposing as well. So let's do our copy. And now we'll go down to cell 106, right click on it, and go to our paste special. And here we want to transpose those values. Instead of having them be horizontal, we want to have them be vertical now. And click OK. And there you have it. You see how it put all the months vertically up and down in rows as opposed to being horizontal in the columns above it. And it took January through May, put them to the left, and put June through December on the right hand side. This is a really useful tool. So in summary, copying and pasting have become staples of working in Microsoft or any computer programs. The additional capabilities offered by Pace Special, however, allow us much more flexibility in building and maintaining our worksheets. Just about any aspect of a cell, from its value to its color, borders, or special rules can be copied independent of the rest of the cell information.